Up and at em, Apocalypse Scouts. Welcome to part one on self-defense for the AI apocalypse. Obviously, artificial intelligence is super smart in lots of ways, but in lots of other ways, it's totally clueless. So for the moment, at least, it is still possible to beat AI at its own game. If I only had a brain. Hi there. I'm Crazy Conspiracy Dude, your pre-apocalyptic source for post-apocalyptic information. Using digital media to prepare for the collapse or ascendance of digital technologies, this is the art of the apocalypse. You're listening to Radio Free Apocalypse. Artificial intelligence has begun to understand how we think better than we do. So to defend ourselves against the machine learning algorithms, we need to understand how they think. And to understand how they think, we need to understand how we think. More specifically, we need to understand how we don't think, because we don't think like we think we do. Clear? Which square is darker, A or B? This is an optical illusion, and believe it or not, both squares are the exact same color. Even though I just told you this is an optical illusion, and these squares are the exact same color, you probably still don't believe me. So, I'll show you. We do not perceive the world precisely as it is. Birds, for example, can see magnetic fields. Bats can see in the dark. Insects like bees and ants communicate and cooperate using senses which we have hardly even begun to understand. What we do know is that when we look at something, as much electrical activity travels downstream from the brain to the eyes as travels upstream from the eyes to the brain. The bottom line is that our eyes often see what our brains are expecting to see. Take a look at this. Now in your head, tell yourself what you just read. Here it is again. Once more, tell yourself what you read. One last time. Tell yourself what you read. Most people will have read The Art of the Apocalypse from AI to Zombie, but that isn't what you saw. What you saw was the art of the, the apocalypse from AI to zombie. We see the world not as it is, but as we are. In his famous experiment with dogs, Pavlov rang a bell at feeding time, and soon the dogs became conditioned and began to salivate whenever he rang the bell. This continued even after feeding time had been uncoupled from the bell. Life conditions us to things in a similar way. And our instinctive responses to things, which seem to take place without any conscious effort, can be described as intuitive. Our intuitions are a gift. We wouldn't be here without them. Yet, as Pavlov's dogs may have discovered, our intuitions are very good at leaping to the wrong conclusions. If we're not careful, our intuitions can deceive and control us. If you're running a race and you passed the person in second place, what place would you be in then? To most people, it's obvious that since you passed the person in second place, you would be in first place. But if you really think this through, you'll arrive at the correct answer. If you pass the runner in second place, you are in second place. You haven't yet passed the person in first place. The point of this riddle is that when we perceive a problem to be not particularly challenging or threatening, we often allow ourselves to solve it instinctively, without engaging our critical thinking processes. It's not difficult to solve problems like this, but it will always take longer to arrive at the correct solution, because you have to work against your expectations and your conditioning. It's the same reason why it's easier to say the color of these words than to say the color of these words. You've been watching me for about five minutes now. Could you accurately describe the color and pattern of my pocket handkerchief? If you're like most people, you probably thought you could describe it, and then you suddenly realized you hadn't quite noticed the details. It's red with a white paisley pattern. Humans have a fairly small spotlight of focus, which we can actually pay attention to. And outside of that spotlight is a whole area that we feel like we see, but that we don't actually notice. The fact is, we do not perceive the world by absorbing everything around us, but by actively constructing a mental model or simulation that makes us feel like we have. 
Our perceptive processes did not evolve to notice, much less process and store everything around us. If we did this, we would be paralyzed in a sea of unanalyzed data. Our mental shortcuts, or heuristics, have evolved to allow us to survive and thrive in our environment, in the moment. But our brains did not evolve to use the internet. And one byproduct of our cognitive shortcuts is that we think we know much more about our intentions and our environment than we actually do. Would you like to see a card trick? Here are five cards. I'd like you to mentally select one of these five cards. The goal here is to psychologically influence everyone watching to pick the same card. Got one? I'll put one card in my pocket. Did I get the one you were thinking of? The odds are that I did. Would you like to know how I did it? I did psychologically influence you, but not the way you probably think. You didn't really pick the same card as everyone else, because none of these cards were here when you chose one. I switched these while you were watching me put your card in my pocket. And you didn't notice that because it's very hard to pay attention to the cards you didn't choose. So when I told you I was trying to influence your choice, really, I was trying to misdirect your attention. We often fail to notice when things change, even if it happens right in front of our eyes, especially if we aren't expecting those things to change. One study found that 50% of people didn't notice when their conversation partners were switched in the middle of a conversation, even when height, clothing, and skin color were notably different. I'll give you an example. Do you remember the color of my pocket handkerchief? Red with a white paisley pattern, right? Actually, this isn't even a pocket handkerchief anymore. This is a package of Maltesers. Why would I stick a package of Maltesers in my breast pocket? To prove a point. It was entirely natural to assume that this was a handkerchief. Not because it looks like one, but because it's where we would expect a handkerchief to be. We make assumptions like this all the time. We look for patterns and we make sense of the world by telling ourselves stories. And then we seek out data to confirm these patterns while ignoring the data which challenges them. This is known as selective perception or confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is one of the most serious intuition traps to avoid. What we perceive as reality is massively influenced by our expectations, assumptions, and desires. We even ignore, suppress, fail to notice, and forget information which challenges our perception of the world. As Voltaire put it, the human brain is a complex organ with the wonderful power of enabling humans to find reasons for continuing to believe whatever it is that they want to believe. In fact, we're so good at finding patterns, we even find them where they don't exist. And we unconsciously seek out data to support our stories, even though those stories are purely imaginary. This is why fake news and propaganda are so effective, and why facts and logic do so little to correct some of our false beliefs. The problem isn't really that we believe false information. The bigger problem is, as the poster over Agent Mulder's X-Files desk reminds us, that we want to believe. We don't always see the world as it is. We often see it as we want it to be. And this is not a bug. It's a feature. It's part of how we have survived so long. But it's a feature which AI has become very good at exploiting. Stanley Milgram, who conducted an extraordinary series of experiments on obedience to authority in the wake of World War II, once suggested, it may be that we are puppets controlled by the strings of society. But at least we are puppets with perception, with awareness, and perhaps our awareness is the first step to our liberation. With that in mind, here's one last puzzle for you to solve. This is a matchbox. This is a match. There's something inside the matchbox. Try to guess what's inside. I'll give you a hint. There are holes in the top and the bottom of the box and I can push the match all the way through the box. 
Would you like to change your guess? I'll show you what's inside. Inside is a solid brass block. Did you guess correctly? This is a puzzle, but it's a puzzle without a solution. To discover a solution, you have to start by admitting that something which you have assumed to be true must be false. Which of your assumptions might be wrong? I'm not just talking about the matchbox either. This applies to your whole life. Which of your assumptions might be wrong? As the great theoretical physicist Richard Feynman put it, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself, and you are the easiest person to fool. And that's all for today, Apocalypse Scouts. To earn your virtual merit badge on the human mind, think about some of the stories you tell yourself that might be incomplete. Also, think about hitting those like and subscribe buttons. And now, let's repeat the Apocalypse Scout's oath. Hope for the best. Prepare for the apocalypse. I'll be back. And remember, the apocalypse does not bend. It's you that must bend around the apocalypse. Get me, get me, I want the get me, get me, get me, come back, get me, get me, get me so pretty, I want the get me, get me.